There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, aboran, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and bismuth, bromine, lithium, beryllium, and barium. Welcome back. In the last video, we talked about how the properties of different radioisotopes allow it to be used in industry and medicine. In this video, we're going to cover the next stop point, which says process information from secondary sources to describe recent discoveries of elements. So what we have to actually do in this case is look at secondary sources, so use the internet or, or books or whatever else, to describe recent discoveries of elements. And first we're going to go over that word transuranic again. Transuranic means uh, they have atomic number, so Z is the atomic number of higher than uranium. So you have atomic number higher than uranium, and uranium has atomic number of 92. So anything above 92 is transuranic. And these were, so the most of the recent discoveries were all the transuranic ones, so all the man-made ones. So the transuranic are all artificial, which means they're man-made. Now I'll go through the order of how they got discovered and who discovered them as well, if there are important names to remember. So first we've got the very first transuranic elements, which are 92, which is neptonium, and 94, which is plutonium, was discovered by Glenn Seaborg. Now this name might be good to remember. Um, this is Glenn Seaborg right here. And he was an American um, scientist. And he and his team worked in California for the University of Berkeley, I believe. And they discovered neptonium plutonium through neutron bombardment. And if you remember why, when it happens to neutron bombardments, if you have uranium, you bombard it with a neutron, you can produce neptonium, and then neptonium decays to plutonium. So that was all in the 1940s. So this was early 1940s. And then he and his team went on a discovery rampage. They basically discovered lots of different elements. So most of the atomic number of 95 to 101 were discovered by his team, so the team of Glenn Seaborg. And this would have been from about 1944 to 1953. So between these years, Glenn Seaborg discovered most of the elements from 95 to 101. And they gave them names which kind of you can, you can tell where they come from. So you've got Californium, Berkelium, and America. Cium, Mericum, as examples. So Californium also obviously comes from the, um, California, the state of California. And that's the state that they live in. Berkelium is from the University of Berkeley, which is the university they were working for. And Americum obviously comes from America because they also live in America. So they named most of these things after places that were related to the team itself. But they also named things like Einsteinium after Einstein and a couple other ones. These were mostly, quite a few were found at hydrogen bomb testing sites. So they basically had a, a hunch that if they went to these testing sites, they could find elements which, which would have not been discovered yet, because there's a lot of release of energy when it comes to hydrogen bombs. So the place that were tested, they examined the elements found there, and they found quite a few new ones, and they gave them those kind of names. Now, recently, so this would have been maybe 19, most of these would have been discovered between 1990 and now. And these are, so most discoveries post 1950s, and specifically sort of the 1990s to now. And these are atomic numbers of 102 to 109. And the reason why most of them are discovered now is because we need to have an ion accelerator. Remember, that's where we had the ions which were accelerated to really high speed due to electrical fields and magnetic fields. And then they were bombarded into target particle and create a really new massive um, transuranic element, which would all decay quite fast. So these have all have a very short half-life and don't, aren't really used for anything, but they've just still been discovered just for the sake of it. But these are all elements which have the atomic number of greater than 100, so 102 to 109. Most of, most of them were discovered from the 1990s to now through ion accelerations. And then we have these crazy high atomic number ones, so from 110 to 118. Now, they are extremely short-lived, so we're talking generally about milliseconds for some to seconds for others, which means 
they will break down within yeah, a split of a second for some of them, and some last a bit longer. And from those 110 to 118, we have discovered, we know that we've, we've named quite a few, so we've named and discovered 110, 111, 112, 114. And we believe we've also discovered quite a few of the other ones. So we believe we've already discovered the ones which are missing, but we haven't named them yet, so no names. And it hasn't been finalized yet. But these are also, some of them were actually discovered even this year, so very recent for some of these discoveries. That's quite exciting for those scientists. But we believe we can actually go higher than 118. It's possible as well. But this is all we have at the moment. So we've gone from just finding the first transuranic elements, neptonium, plutonium in the 1940s, through then Seaborg, to getting the slightly bigger ones, such as Californium, Berkelium, and Americium. And that was also discovered by the team of Glenn Seaborg by going to hydrogen bomb testing sites. And we have the quite big ones, which were the ones with atomic number of 102 to 109. Those were discovered mostly in the 1990s to now. And that was with the help of ion accelerators. And then we have the extremely big ones, which are the ones with had atomic number of 118, 110 to 118. Quite a few were discovered. Some of them have no names yet, no real names yet. Uh, and the, the most recent discoveries just happened literally this or last year, so they're quite recent. And we might go even higher, but we haven't gone that, that far yet. So that's how I'll describe the recent discoveries of elements. That's the series of how everything happened. So I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.